Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today isn't about this trip, well, I suppose it's sort of. You know, I've just travelled 63 miles to get to somewhere that's only probably about 35, 40 miles away. And the reason for that, I'm running down the battery on this Kona Electric so that I can try out one of these. Instavolt chargers, 125 kilowatts. And there's eight of them. This is the new Necton Charging Hub in Norfolk and there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to do some videoing here and talk about this charger because personally I think this is the most important charger that's ever been installed that I'm likely to use. So why do I think that? Why do I think this is such an important charger? And I think it is because it's a symbol. It's a symbol of how much things have changed in the two years that I've been looking at EVs. It's no longer the time of the early adopter. It's the time that electric cars are suitable for absolutely everyone. And it's charging stations like this that make a really, really big difference. Now it's not because they're 125 kilowatt, which is you know, a big deal anyway. It's not because there's eight of them. It's not because there's a Costa um, coffee shop next to it and a co-op shop as well. It's not for all of those reasons that this is a really good hub, not just a charging location. It's much more than that. And that's what I want us to try and talk about. I've been thinking about doing a video for quite a while about, well, it's about one of the early videos that I did where I was really depressed because there were just no cars available. I wanted to go electric. And there was a Zoe, which the seat didn't go up. It didn't have height adjustment, so I didn't like it. There was a Leaf and I just didn't enjoy driving it. And it was the only one in the showrooms that you could actually go and buy a Nissan Leaf. There was the i3, but the range was terrible on it. Um, what else was there? There was an Ionic, but you couldn't really get them. Um, and that was about it. There was just nothing. There was nothing you could get. There was the Vauxhall, um, the Bolt equivalent, or the Volt equivalent. I can't remember which it is, but they didn't bring it to the UK, so we couldn't buy that. There's the Tesla, but how many years would you have to wait until you, you could get it? A Model 3, that is. And that was a nearly a two-year wait, so that didn't work either. Um, I just felt so, so frustrated that I wanted to go electric, but I couldn't. And the big reason was... The main journeys that I wanted to do were all within 100 miles, so any EV would have done me, range-wise, but at least 10 to 15% of my journeys are over to Peterborough to see my daughter, and that's 80, 90 miles there, and then the same back, so 180 miles, add 20 miles contingency for detours, and you don't really want to arrive with an empty battery on the way home, so I really needed a 200-mile range car, and yet there were none. There were none you could buy, so it was extremely frustrating two years ago. There were no rapid chargers around Norwich. There were no real rapid chargers that I was familiar with around Peterborough. There were certainly none in between. There was rumoured to be one in Kings Lynn, but you had to go to the centre of Kings Lynn and go to, um, a, what was it, a multi-storey car park or something like that, where you had to park and pay. Um, it's... You had to go out of your way, it was just too big an inconvenience. There wasn't enough infrastructure. So back then, it was frustrating. This, this has transformed things, and it's transformed things for a really big reason. Not because it's a charger in Norfolk that I can use, that's not the reason. Because there are lots now in Norwich, but they aren't as useful and aren't as important as this one. This one is on the main A47. So you don't have to go out of your way to use it. If you're traveling into Norfolk or out of Norfolk, it's available for you without any inconvenience. So that's a really big factor. But if I go over to visit my daughter, which is 90 miles there, and then it's, say, 50 miles here to this charger, that's only 140 miles. And then I can top up. I don't need a 200 mile range car anymore to do that extra 15% of my journeys that I don't want the inconvenience of waiting an hour or half an hour even to charge at. So if I don't want the inconvenience of charging, then why am I talking about this charger being important? And it's, I can do a splash and dash. I can extend the range of my car. If I only had a 150 mile range car, I could get to Peterborough, get back here and put just enough in because it's paid by the kilowatt hour. I can put in just what I want to get home and then I can charge up when I get home. So this is a 10 minute splash and dash. So I can pull in here, pop to the co-op while the car's on charge, grab four pints of milk and a bar of chocolate for the evening. 
and I'm not inconvenienced at all. It's a nice break on the way home and I've topped up. It makes EVs work. So whether you're on business coming to Norfolk, you can charge. Whether you're coming on holiday into Norfolk, you can charge. Whether you want a full charge or a good charge on the way out as you're leaving Norfolk, this really works. So yeah, there are lots of charges around Norwich and they're useful for people that have to go into the city. But for those that are just traveling past or two, you need these sort of hub things on major roads. And uh, I have to apologise to James from James and Kate that uh, we had a discussion a while ago where I was saying, no, we don't want hubs. What we want is a charging station in every Tesco's and every Sainsbury's because everyone goes there. But I was looking at it from the perspective of people that live there that need charges near them, whereas these hubs are for people that aren't living near them. So I wouldn't expect people living in the villages and the towns nearby to come and use this hub necessarily. This is for commuters, this is for holiday makers, this is for people driving in and out of the county and it really makes an electric car work having this facility. It increases effectively the range of your car because it's reliable, it's easy, there's no app, it, it just makes life simple, it's how it should be. And the fact you don't need a big half an hour charge, but if that's what you want you can get it and it's going to be really quick. Well, that's what we're going to test in a minute. I am going to plug it in and uh, have a look and see how much energy we get out of these chargers and whether it beats what we got at the Ionity charger the uh, other week when we charged up. So there you go. That's why I think these Instavolt chargers, this hub specifically on the A47 in Necton near Swaffham, Norfolk, is the most significant charger that I've seen installed. And that is because it enables smaller range EVs to travel longer distance and it makes it a practical option one that I didn't want to take I didn't want an Ionic back two years ago because with 120 to 150 mile range maximum it would have been tight and I would have had to charge for over half an hour to get back home but with this charging location I could have done a splash and dash and it would have worked the Ionic probably could have charged at 60 to 70 kilowatts as well it's a really good option to have a smaller range EV and it makes it practical. So for those that can't afford a 30, 40,000 pound Kona Electric or e Nero or Model 3 Tesla, then you can have a used Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour, an i3 40 kilowatt hour, an MG ZS 44 kilowatt hour, whatever it is, and an Ionic, whether it be the 28 kilowatt hour or the 38 kilowatt hour. And this charging location will make it seem like the car has got a longer range. It will make it more practical. It'll make it work for you. So I honestly see this charging hub as a symbol, a beacon to show that EVs are here. They're not just for early adopters, they're for everyone. And it's when you've got an infrastructure item like this that it really works and really makes it simple. So charging experience, well the first thing to say is the screen and the information that it gives you is very big. It tells you it's a 125 kilowatt charger, it tells you the price is 35 pence per kilowatt hour and despite the glare and reflection from the sun it was actually big enough and very clear to see. I could even see it from inside the car and I liked that. Unlike many chargers, just tap your debit card and then away you go. It took just a few seconds to authorise and then gave me this message to say plug in. There's a CHAdeMO connector and a CCS connector, and I've got to say, the holders were extremely good. Very stable, they definitely didn't look like they're going to be falling out and breaking and found all over the floor. So well done again, Instavolt. Plug the car in, and we're charging. Now, according to this little device, the battery temperature is at 21 degrees. The temperature in the car is 30 degrees, and I'm only at 34% state of charge. Yep, just 34 percent state of charge so temperature is a little higher than it was at Ionity and the state of charge is a little bit lower but that's the closest I could get and the crazy thing is I passed a Tesla destination charger which is for free I could have charged there but here I am paying for my charge at Instavolt just so that I can check out the charge rates and share it the information with you I've also got 99 miles range left plenty to get home and standing next to the charger, this is the view of the charging session starting, starting from zero, ramping up slowly, and already it's added a mile of range, and we're up to 52.6 kilowatts. Only four pounds? That's mm -hmm. quite good, isn't it, sir? Well, we had enough already. I know, but like, 
considering like think of oil like like if you're going on a diesel car yep charlotte's right 35 pence a kilowatt hour even at that price it's much better than petrol or diesel but of course it's much cheaper to charge at home from solar on our solar panels and it's a beautiful gorgeous day so there's no need for me to charge any more here i know what the charge rates are going to be i've now seen it go to the maximum rate on the kona electric it'll keep charging at these high rates now until about 72 percent state of charge and then it'll start reducing and when it gets to closer to 80 percent then it'll start reducing down even more so time to get to 50 percent tap the debit card unplug the car and away we go that's the charging session complete. Uh, I didn't fill the car right up, although it was filling up really, really quick in the end. I filled up to 50%. Basically, as soon as we saw that it started the charge at 52 kilowatts, I was really happy. That was exactly the same as the Ionity charger. So similar temperature, similar state of charge on the car, same car, same power rate to start with. But with this Instavolt charger, it kept increasing. And as soon as the battery management fans and the pump came on as soon as the temperature got to around 28 C on the battery and uh, I double checked that with the OBD reader then uh, the speed ramped up instead of to 59 kilowatts like it did on the Ionity all the way to 76 kilowatts so much much better here full power nothing being slowed down I have no idea about the Ionity charger whether that was the car slowing it down because it chose to or whether it was the actual charger itself but this is how I'd expect the charger to behave. The state of charge was low enough, the temperature was ideal, and we got an absolutely perfect charge out of it. Literally, we've had just enough time to have a few sips of coffee, pop into the shop to grab something to eat, and the car's got 50% already. We're, we pulled in here with 99 miles to go. I've now got 147. That's exactly what I think this charging hub is perfect for, giving you the perfect amount of charge in the minimum amount of time, to get you to your next destination and extending the range of your EV. Thanks for watching everyone, thanks for sharing these videos. Go on, subscribe to the channel please if you haven't already, it really does help. But thank you for watching again, take care and see you again soon. Bye bye for now. So that was Charlotte's first experience of a charger in an EV. So Charlotte, when you get a car, are you going to have a petrol car, a diesel car, or an electric car? Um, I think if I like the look of the... Oh, I don't like it! I'm not the side! I don't like Go it! Go on, I can edit that. Go on. Um, oh, God. Can I think of an answer? I think if it's nice, I would quite like to be um, economical and have an electric car, but if not, no, what am I saying? Can I stop? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know what to say. Um, can you ask me the question again, please? Of course I can. So Charlotte, that was your first experience in an electric car, going to a charger and charging. How was that for you? Did it take very long? Uh, no, not at all. It's very quick. So you wouldn't mind having to charge like that if you had an electric car and you needed to stop and charge? Yeah, I think it'd be quite handy having having a little electric car to beetle around in. So how long did we actually stop for? Like 20 minutes. Really? I thought it was only about 15. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it was quite quick. It was nice. Very, I really like the charges. There's lots of them. What's quite unusual at the moment, I guess. It was the biggest amount of charges I've seen. They look really nice. So when you take your driving test and uh, you're allowed to drive a car, are you going to get a petrol, diesel or, or electric car? I want a Mini. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't care what it is. You're going to drive stinky old diesel but if it's I a would, Mini. But I, I think an electric car is the future. And I think, especially as my generation, I think it's really important to be economical and be good to our planet. So I would say probably a, an electric car, do you think, but if not so many. Do you honestly think that's important though? No, it's Looking not. after the planet? Yeah, no, I think it's really important. I think it's so important to look after the environment you're with and really, I don't know how to say, like, yeah, I do think it's important. Because I didn't, I didn't think it was important at all. I didn't give a damn until I got an electric car and then it 
just made sense it and now, now I get it I think because there's so much ignorance in the world especially like I think as children you need to realise where your parents and other like grandparents and things have made their mistakes and like we are the future so I think it's important to keep it going as long as possible thank you Charlotte Oh, so no, don't, don't, uh, <laughs> no, what is it? Is it my way? My way, my way, or the highway? <laughs> <laughs>